the YouTube people. I'm here with Philly Venison. That's not his name, but it's, you know, we all have alias. Wait, I, I, I don't have one. How do I get an alias? I needed a name for my Instagram account and my real name was not available, so I use Philly Venison. Oh, that, that makes That's a lot it. of sense. So <laughs> he's, he's uh, around and about on Instagram and um, has like a billion followers, I guess, something uh, like that. Around 150,000. That's a lot. It's more yeah. than I have. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's Instagram. I have 9,960 on Instagram. So where are those 40 people? Um, and I've seen you sport a lot of guitars that are kind of yellowish and red and have that single cut shape. You, yes. You've, you've spent quite a bit of money on those. I love Les Pauls. My main or my favorite guitar is a Les Paul. And they usually have a G on them. Yes, that's right. They have so, a big G on it on the headstock. And uh, we don't do that here because they can fuck off. So he's a G man and he's a Les Paul Noah. And that made a lot of sense, since he's here today, to, I was gonna do this review a little bit later, but actually to pull up the Heritage Custom Core Artisan Aged Review, because this guy actually knows his Les Pauls. So, makes sense to have him play it and give us his opinion on it. So Heritage, you guys know, is the Kalamazoo, I think, factory from Gibson, and Gibson moved away, and then some people said, we want to stay here, can we stay here and continue making guitars, we just build a new company? And a lot of the old Gibson team stayed back in the day. Now, a few years ago, that was bought by Bandlab, who are uh, from Singapore. They do mono gig bags, Tysco pedals, they do heritage guitars, and they do harmony guitars. Harmony guitars also built in that classic Gibson factory. So Heritage for years have been the guitar to go to if you want kick-ass quality, but actually at a price that's affordable. Their H150 is kind of their bread and butter Les Paul, 2,500 bucks, and they're ridiculously good. Now they were like, well, Peepsons, Peepsons, what are Peepsons? People spend the money on custom shop, so we offer a custom shop line. And now they have the Heritage Custom Core which they offer in an artisan aged. The G will call that Frank or Murphy or Bill. I don't know, the Bill line. I have no idea. I don't follow that shit. Don't go there. So they have the artisan aged. Artisan means, you know, good shit. And that's what they sent me. And Freddie looked at it and he was like, this is nicely aged. Yeah, beautiful. Looks killer. It's a killer looking guitar. So the, the top you can barely actually see the flame because of all the crackle in the paint. Um, I will absolutely take this pick out off yeah. because it's not my thing, yeah. but we have it on here for the review. Um, and turn it around. Turn around, bright, I get it? Um, beautifully aged. The neck has so much lines of cracked paint in it that actually there are some paint specks missing. It's not a perfect neck. It really feels yeah. extremely old. Um, the headstock is yellowed, there we can see that, yeah, yellowish um, with the mother of abalone something. Uh, the binding is really like that's been in a smoked, sm non-smoke-free studio for a long time. Uh, it, it's gorgeous. So, let me go into some bitching, okay, because the first thing I said to Meng, who is the owner, of uh, BandLab, uh, we, we chat on Instagram, which is where you're from. Uh, on Instagram, by the way, he does not look ridiculous. I make him look ridiculous, okay? I really want a little car to go, no, 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 but I, I, don't, I don't have anything. Sorry, sorry. It's okay, I like it. <laughs> um, it's, there's so much attention to detail. The aging is so ridiculously nice. If you look at the, the tuner buttons, for example, they, this, they are, uh, how do you say that, um, vergilbt. There's little drops of, I mean, little rusty drops. It's perfect, but there are three things that are not aged, which is, I think, an oversight. Pickup rings are brand spanking new and the screws on the pickup rings should be rusted. They are not. Is that a reason not to buy this? No, don't be an idiot. Uh, go online to websites that do age parts, order yourself some pickup rings for 25 bucks and replace them. 
It's something that Heritage should have taken care of, but maybe they don't really know how to do aging on plastic. Possible. Who knows? Um, the jack plate right here, also pretty brand spanking new. So, uh, and then I think the inlays, everything is yellowish. Then you see the yellowing on the uh, headstock right there. Absolutely. And the inlays don't show that. I think the inlays would look older. Don't you agree? Yes, absolutely. That's a little bit. They look too new. However, I don't give a flying rat's ass. If you want a collector's item, I spent 12,000 bucks for it. Buy the G, buy the H, buy Bill and his Frank friends. I don't know. I don't give a shit. Go away. I want this as a tool. I want a guitar that plays. Yes. I want a guitar that sounds good. Stays in tune. And it does. It does. And I recorded the track at the beginning with this. And it was like, holy shit balls. Thick rock tone, definition in the attack, nice treble on the bridge pickup. This is by far one of the best rock guitars I have ever played, without a doubt. So it is the Les Paul I've been waiting for. So whether this is aged or not, you could be anal about it. But I want it as a I want it as a as a tool to make music. And as a tool to make music, that thing freaking rules. I will let you know some stats, because I got yelled at by BandLab in my harmony videos because I winged it. So it's not all good, Ben. You were right. It's not a lot of stats. They don't give you a lot. Heritage Custom Shop Core H150 highlights. Vintage gloss with artisan aged option available. That's artisan aged. And it's more like a matte. There isn't a lot of gloss left, yeah. right? It looks real. Um, Heritage Pearl logo with twin arrow inlay on hollow, holly veneered heads. Who cares? Logo. Uh, premium curly maple top. Okay. You can barely see it because of all the crackling. Um, one piece ultra light mahogany. Is this ultra light? No, not ultra. But it's way lighter than a Gibson. Really? Yeah. I think it's lighter than my Gibson Les Paul. Okay. He knows, I don't. Don't have a Gibson, never will. Redesigned top calf with 17 degree headstock and 4.5 degree neck angle. It still doesn't have a volute, which really bugs me because why not make it better than other brands? Okay, fine, it's traditional. Equipped with Custom Shop 225 Classic Hamburger. So we don't know, it's Custom Shop, it's Heritage Custom Shop, and you know whatever the fuck they put in there is freaking good. Custom Shop hard case, it's a very good case and the case is ridiculously heavy. Uh, it's a good case. So that's that page. The standard H150 is $26.99. The custom core H150, that's the thing that I didn't get when I talked to Benjamin about it. I'm like, I'm gonna guess about five. And this would be a good price, five, five K. I know you're gonna say, who can afford a five K guitar? Not many people. But that level of amazing should be about five. It's $39.99. And that's not cheap, but that's where the G starts with their guitars that are worth anything. They make some good guitars, but this is where their line ends. This is where the G starts. So we got Dirty Lemon Burst, Dark Cherry Sunburst, or Tobacco Sunburst. I'm going to go with that's what? The, I think it's almost a tobacco. It's probably tobacco. I think yeah. so, yeah. Um, Artisan aged, holly veneer head. Okay. Premium curly maple. We said that. We said that. Overall guitar weight guaranteed to be no more than 8.5 pounds. No clue what that means. This is a guitar channel. I know, I know nothing. Custom shop, Humber. We said that. Locking bridge with aluminium stopper, heritage, heritage branded tuner. So we don't know who make them, but the tuners work. They're Precise. Custom shop brown case with heritage custom shop badge and case candies. So yeah, I gave you stats that are really not a lot of stats. I can't tell you nut width and it doesn't even say what the nuts made out of. Nuts material, probably bone. I don't, I, a guitar that sounds this good, I don't give a shit. Do, do you really care if it sounds good? No. 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 It's a tool, right? Yeah. So. We're going to go and get you sounds. Would you please start on the neck 
On the neck, yes. With nothing on. I have this brand new amazing e-board that we built for Studio B. Uh, let me run you through the board really quick. We got a compressor down there from Jackson Audio. We got a fuzz run uh, powered by a high event power supply. We got a FLIR buffer before everything. There's a delay. Another delay will go there once I reviewed it. The board, of course, is a Schmidere SA350 XDM. Thank you, Schmidere. We have the gearbox with a tumnus and a pinnacle. We have this overdrive, which is good and has knobs, and Chase Bliss makes it. There's a reverb that Chase Bliss also makes, um, and a tuner. And right now, you hear none of it. In a world where you don't have a space to record drums, no mics to record them, and you don't want to hang out with your drummer because he's dating your girlfriend. One man dares to come to the rescue. A man so brave that any sense of fashion doesn't even try to approach him. This mouse drumming sensei will teach you mere mortals how to get on the grid. How to use the clickies and create realistic boom boom checks from the comfort of your office chair. You will tour many drum BSTs, build drum maps, assign individual outs and learn mixing techniques. You will gain the secrets of the groove and see the techniques on a real drum kit. You'll walk away with intricate knowledge of how to use ghost notes, subdivisions, fills and breaks, odd time, double kicks, and subtle drumming. It's all there in this massive 22 lesson course spanning almost 15 hours. Drummerless drumming is here. Start your adventure now. That's, uh, that's the uh, Fender Deluxe Reverb through the Captor X with the 412 Forton. But that sounds delightful. Actually, let's do the compressor. Okay. Compressing pretty hard, but it's got a yeah. big ass attack. Yeah, uh, go middle position. That's for me the neck on this is a little bit round for some clean sounds. If I want something in the mix, like with a nice delay to really stand out, like an arpeggiated higher line, I feel it's a little bit too round. Okay. But that middle position really sticks out. Yeah. That gives me the attack and that gives me the brightness I need. Uh, so I, it's one of those guitars where I find myself going to the neck humbucker less than on other guitars. Um, and then we got the back, which I would rarely play clean. But yeah. I think on this... <laughs> It's not too harsh. That, the ex most, exactly, it's not too sometimes harsh. Sometimes it's too harsh and you can't play it clean. But when you give it gain, it doesn't, That it, it's it's harsh enough. Let me put yeah. it this way. Um, we're going to put the tumnus in there, which is uh, a clone type thing. And that's on loop number. Don't ask me. 
We're going to go two. Yes. <laughs> Uh, let's turn on the Chase Bliss preamp. That, that, that works. And if I now hit the fuzz on the Chase Bliss, uh, we're going to hear fuzz. Nobody needs fuzz, but uh, you want it. So. <laughs> that's, that's a mean ass, big yeah. ass fuzz sound. Um, okay, well, that's of course with pedals and a clean amp. Now let's go into, well, you would probably want to go into like a JTM totally blown up vintage style amp with this, right? Yeah. And so we shall with the Achilles, which is behind me and that's going to sound super fuzzy and blown up, but that's what we do. <laughs> That amp is difficult to play, right? Yeah. Because it's it's it it doesn't work with you. But um, if you take back the volume a little bit, like go here, take the back the volume. <laughs> Pick the tech. It, it's it's ridiculously dynamic. Yeah. Uh, now the TV wants to turn off. Why? 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 Because we've been here for a while. Okay. Um, let's let's pump a fuzz into that thing. That's probably mean, but we're here to be mean. Uh, that fuzz. What the crap is happening? Okay. That amp does not want that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's rock and roll yeah. right the fuck there. Heavy fuss. Um, let's go into more of a traditional crunch, which is the second channel from the Rev Generator 740. That does not suck. No. <laughs> it really <laughs> doesn't. Absolutely not. Uh, I want to hear that with the tumblers in front of it. Go play. <laughs> That works. Yep, it's fine. Um, we also have the Friedman small box over there. Yeah. So let's go to the B. <laughs> let's, let's, he's looking for the small box. Um, so that's the BE channel and that's number five. <laughs> I love how wait, maybe, I love how well you play, 
and how rock and roll and how cool it all is, but how it's completely negated by the shirt you're playing. <laughs> like I'm looking at this, I'm like, this is all really cool. And one could look at you and like, oh, this guy is really cool. And look how he's playing and ah, oh, I want to be that guy. But then no, that shirt kills everything yeah. you do. I love it. <laughs> it's great. It literally, it doesn't matter how good you play. It just makes you completely ridiculous. Yes. I wonder if this is how people see me. Just without the good playing. Just the ridiculous. <laughs> um, okay, we got this. That sounds ridiculous with that Friedman. Awesome. Um, give me that thing because yep. I want to now do something that, well, people do with Les Pauls. Um, going to go a little bit higher again and we're going to do this thing where people, how does this work? <laughs> played a rev. Um, play a rev because it's the most, uh, well, there's not a lot of low end, okay. which means what people do with the Mesa and then put a tube screamer in front of it to make it tighter, I'll just cut the low end out so that it doesn't flap around. That amp doesn't need that because that's just how it's delivered. Okay. And it's very direct in its response, but um, Let's see. it's fun. <laughs> Tone. It's extremely tight, and that yeah. is, uh... Oh, <laughs> that's gain pretty much low. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And that's why people play riff. Oh, yeah. It's right there. And that guitar has a lot of balls, a lot of low end, but it doesn't overpower the amp. It, yeah. There's no flap happening. Yeah. That's a good combination. Now let's pump it into something very traditional metal, which is a fireball by <laughs> Different. It, different. It, more dense. Yeah. Definitely more dense. Give me that. Um, and, it's but also, what? Oh. It's the middle position right now. And, and uh, it's still very, very responsive. <laughs> well, like more the traditional metal. <laughs> And this guitar can actually handle it all. Yeah. Um, let me do the Fender again. I'm gonna go back to... And look how Leslie is. I tune and she goes on the tuner. <laughs> That's how fucking professional my lady is. Yeah. And the G-string is still there. Did you see that? Wow. Which is not normal. No. Um, so I go to a preset here. Oh no, that's not a preset. Go. Yeah, memory mode, thank you. That 
That is so smooth with that. Yeah. With that, it, it's just top end. It's very rolled off. It's nice and warm and yeah. It's, it's great. You e I think you can hear the, the wood of the of the last ball. Yeah, and you can even with that gain, you can still yeah. hear it. But if I want a little bit more bite, I I go on the bargain, uh, of course. Uh. <laughs> I'm not rolling back the volume. Yeah. This is, I'm just playing dynamically and the guitar lets me. even has a bit built in. God, that's nice. Saturated in a way, but not it's fizzy, saturated, and rock without being too much. Ah. You have to hit the strings, the guitar doesn't do that for you. Compresses like crazy. I don't think that's the overdrive. Okay. I think that's the. I think the guitar compresses. Spring, every single it's, spring. Everything is there. Well, maybe it's time to look at heritage, Mr. Yeah, Benison. Maybe. <laughs> awesome guitar. It's killer, it sounds killer. It's my tone. We can do this for days, but there you have it. Uh, Heritage custom core artisan aged through a bunch of amps, bunch of pedals, bunch of players um, in silly shirts. Now, uh, you have spent, you, you revealed yourself to me earlier. You said you've spent like seven grand on this pause before, right? Oh, a lot of money. Like not not on several, but on one. On ju just one guitar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have more than just well, it's more. I have three, four Les Pauls, and it was very expensive. In all, in like the higher price range. Yeah. Well, do you think this could get up to that level of those guitars? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm asking. Yes, I think so. 
it's for me it's a big problem right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, th that's the thing, if you leave out the G and you don't need the iconic, authentic headstock, you just want an amazing tool that has everything that a rock and roll guitar has to have. It's right there. And I'm saying it's only 4,000 bucks. I get it. Most of us will never spend 4,000 bucks on, on a guitar. Uh, this guy will. But realistically, I never, I mean, I, I never did until recently and recently, well, I don't pay for the guitars. Oh, talking about payment, I'm not getting paid for this video. Um, I do get a guitar, so I'm not bitching about anything, okay? And I'm not saying any of this because I get the guitar. This is a paid for video, I get the product. Um, he's most certainly not saying any of this because literally he doesn't even get to keep the shirt. He gets nothing. He gets to play my guitar and go home with a tear in his eye. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really impressed by this guitar. I thought it would be quite a bit more expensive. Because I have very good guitars and I know how much you pay for one. I love my Maybach, by the way. You're going to ask Maybach Lester, which is a great guitar for 2000 bucks. It's a great guitar. It's beautifully aged. It's all this. But there is a difference between this and the Lester. A, it's 2000 euro difference. Yeah. And B, Tonally, there is, this is a step up, okay? I don't even want to say in terms of the aging and all that, but tonally, this is a step up. This, for me, is my rock and roll masterpiece now. That's all I can say. Um, we'll put links below. You check this out. Well, I don't know. I can link to Instagram, right? I don't can know. I, can I? Maybe. I'll try to link to you. If not, I put a name, and then you go and you follow him. He doesn't need really no more followers. He's got a billion. I need more. <laughs> I need 40, 40 more for... 10,000. He's got way more than that. But he's got good content, pretty guitars. He can, the fuck can he play? And so follow him on the thing that where the, with the selfies. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm too old. <laughs> um, thank you for hanging out with me, Julie. Yeah. Um, thanks, Leslie, for switching. And we're going to put some, you know, you know, you know, animals at the end.